And then we'll make another building right here. It's going to be a very big one, actually. Let's make it a bit smaller. Let's do a 6 by 10. And there's quite a lot of space between that building and the land around it. So maybe we actually get rid of that, because I think it's a bit too far away. And instead, we have a sort of 6 by 9 here. And then we can have a building, a 10 by 6 there. So there's plenty of space to walk around. Hmm. We'll make that go along by one. There we go. I don't like it connecting up by there, so maybe we chunk that bit off. Or take that bit off there. 9 by 6. Now we have a free walkway right here to move around. If we so require that. Yeah, well, if we require that. Down here as well, we need a few houses. See if we get rid of all this. Not, Don't upgrade it. <laughs> Leave the upgrades alone. Let's get rid of the food here as well. Do we want this bit to connect up? I don't think so. It's kind of pointless, really, since this bit's already working out for us. Uh, at the top right here, I'm going to leave this scaffolding for the time being, just in case we want to delete this bit at the top. You know, make our lives easier for the miners. Um, also, that crypt looks really good now. I'm start it's starting to grow on me a little bit. I'm looking at it with the trees in the background. You know it's a crypt when you look at it. It's quite unique as well. For a great warrior is May. Never forget. And we got her little gravestone right there as a memorial. Good job to our miners. Our builders could probably work and do something though. Like get this roof of this house done. I don't see why not. <laughs> Let's just do something in the background while we're chilling out. It's a shame it's so close to this roof though. But oh well, that's just the way of things. Uh, so let's see, timber plaster. That was not what I was going for. Uh, timber plaster, there we go. Two, and then one up. Oh yeah, we could do this for all of these. Like we can see where we're roughly pointing and what direction. So the smaller direction would be like this. There we go. Get some of it done. Uh, this bit. Basically the smaller sides is what we usually go for when it comes to the flat part of our roof. Or the flat face. There we go. Just doing something as simple as this really is showing, like, it's helping me visualize how the roofs are going to work with each other. This one's a bit more awkward, because they're about evenly spaced. Eight versus nine? Yeah, okay, so this direction, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's a shame some of these houses are just going to have the flat roofs like this. But I guess, I think I said before, it's quite nice to have something a bit different. The only problem with these houses, they are very boring, really. Like, we probably want to add a few bits like this on the houses every now and again. We might end up doing that. Just to make the roofs look more intriguing. I say intriguing. I just keep trying to explain things or use other words and... I'm trying, okay? Just give me a moment. Where's my whiskey? There we go. Mm. Ah, lo lovely water. Preferable over the whiskies. Whiskies are... I mean, they're nice. But, but I'm not going to indulge, especially in the morning. That would not be a good idea. There we are. That was quick. They're already mostly done there for the time. Oh, well, they're, mi they're nearly done there. I was gonna, For some reason, I was trying to say for the time being. I was like, why? <laughs> uh, we are. I, did, I think I did say we're leaving this bit. We are going to get rid of this bit of stone as well after we've done these buildings. It's going to be a pain to do it, but we have to. Stone here as well that we need to get rid of eventually. Stone along here and stone here as well. It just doesn't look good. Ooh, that's a lot of stone to get rid of. <laughs> Bit of a pain, actually. We need to get rid of all this stuff now. Or... This can be where the sort of double garden bit is. No, I don't like that idea. Then we go. We have so many, so many uh, buildings here now, or at least designated places for them. We still need some down here as well. Is this anything unique? No. Hmm. I'm starting to think maybe. And we got an archery range up here. Town hall can't go there. Too close. 
It just seems like quite a nice spot for something unique. But we're running low on things, and we need to have something else over here covering up this spot, otherwise it's just going to be all boring houses. So yeah, I think we're fine. We've already got a kind of unique building right there. And we've already got a playground nearby. I say a playground. But you know what I mean. Uh, dig and mine. Yeah, just houses. It's going to be awkward the way they work. But I guess we can go down here instead. Not a 10 by 10. Uh, by 11 would be nice. There we go. So put one right there. And then maybe a house that's similar in size. 8 by 12, but we cut this bit off. And then we go along here. There we go. I like that. I like that a lot, lot. So we just got two houses here. They're spaced out. That's what I'm looking for. Right here. I don't want a house. I think it takes up this, uh, too much space. We can have one right here, though. Uh, six by ten. But we can go along this way by one. Cut this bit off. There you go. We got a house right there covering up. <laughs> covering up, man. You've got to cover itself up. It is a lady house. <laughs> that kind of thing. Cover yourself up, madam. No. It's fine. Too much war and peace. I said war and peace there. It sounded like I said war on peace. It's actually an interesting title if it was that instead. Anyway. Um, walls. Roofing. Ow. If I... For those that are wondering, well, I'm every now and again in slight pain. because Merv is using me as a climbing frame. And it's quite painful. <laughs> I didn't really say why. I just said, ah, Merv, why? There you know what I'm doing. We just, we'll climb down my shirt and then just sort of chill out on my leg underneath the desk and just sort of be like, yeah, it's nice and uh, cozy down here. Just going to chill out. Stop. <laughs> that kind of thing. I'm going to get the flooring done now. How are we, how are we over here? That was quick. <laughs> That's very quick. Nice to see. That's made our lives significantly easier. Okay, then. So, roofing... We want to make sure we can't see it if we're one block high. Well, we don't want to make sure it's too high. So it's got to be covered by natural land on all sides just so we, we can't see it on the natural, on the floor. On the base level. There we go, the base. We can't see it, basically. We don't want to see it unless we do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I got really annoyed then. I'm not going to lie. Really frustrated. Timbered floor. What are we using for the floor over here? I think it was timbered planks for the base layer. Yep, timbered planks. How much do they cost? Two. Okay, we got plenty of wood. Let's just fill this all up. That's a bit awkward looking. Let's go up a little bit. Um, how do I feel about that one? Bit awkward looking, actually. We can work with it. We can work with all of this. Tell you what, I have been playing a little bit. I played the demo of um, Diablo 3. And it's pretty good, actually. Although I think it's it's the best sort of melee I've had, or melee combat, for a while. I used to play a lot of Torchlight 2, and I basically had like a character that was on free game, free game plus plus plus, or something like that. Uh, it was um, it was a very high level berserker spear guy or polearm character, extremely powerful. Polearms are ridiculous in Torchlight 2. And he had like a legendary sp spear, pole arm or something. Or maybe I found a staff actually, maybe. He found a legendary item, which are absurdly hard to find. Unless you play a lot of the game. But that was really fun. I enjoyed that. And now I feel like I've got that itch again, but I want to try something else. I haven't tried to Diablo 3. Did I say Torchlight 3? I meant to say Diablo 3. But Torchlight 2 was what I was playing. Uh, but yeah, Diablo 3. I played a little bit of Diablo 2. It wasn't something I played a shizload of during my childhood. But I did play a decent amount of it. It was alright. I tried to play it again a little while ago. But it was, oh, it was too much on the eyes. I was getting eye strain. Even with um, HD mods. Or uh, resolution mods and stuff like that. It just oh, it hurt. I guess there was something I was missing. But oh well. But yeah, I did try the Diablo free, free trial version, which is you get to kill the Skeleton King, essentially, and do all that, or do the bits and pieces. I don't care too much about the story, I just want the combat and the loots and all that fun stuff. 
So yeah, uh, I found it pretty cool. The Berserker class is very cool, very fun. Uh, the game looks good as well. Better than Torchlight, just because I think I prefer that grim look to it, rather than a very vibrant, colourful thing uh, look that uh, Torchlight 2 went for. A lot more impact. I like the ragdoll effect. It's quite humorous sometimes. I don't really like the ranged character, though. I can't remember what it's called. The, the hunter or huntress. Whatever. Um, yeah, it just there's no impact there. You're just holding, and that's it. Uh, similar to most ranged characters, but in Torchlight 2, they did it very well. Whereas, for some reason, Diablo 3, it just it was lackluster. Maybe because it's early game. You know, you got to wait until you get the really powerful stuff that synergize with other powers before it becomes interesting. Just with the Berserker, you felt... I keep using the word impact, but that's really what I'm trying to say. It was just a lot of impact. You felt strong. You felt like you were a powerful character. Even though not necessarily you should have been, because you just started. But I felt it, so there we go. Planks. I haven't tried all the characters, though. I've just tried those two. I haven't tried the Wizard yet, uh, nor the Crusader, because you can't unless you have the base game. Which I'm probably going to pick up and probably play with my mate and maybe live stream it every now and again. I don't know. Depends. The annoying thing about me and playing games is I'll binge them and then just I'm done with it and I won't come back to it until like well, maybe a year's time. And I won't even want to continue my character. I want to start again. Get to the same point I was at with the other character and then I'm done with it. I hate that because I get nostalgic about it. It's like I used to play a shiz load of Natural Selection 2 and now I don't play it at all. I haven't even thought about it. Which annoys the hell out of me. I'm looking forward to when I sort of want to play more Natural Selection too, because that game is so good. It took me by surprise, because my my friends were like, "Oh yeah, let's play some Natural Selection too. This looks interesting. It's on. It's uh, free for this weekend. Let's play it." And they're like, "Okay, and let's play it." Like the whole uh, aspect of it. I can't remember what the game style is called, but you know, it's not balanced necessarily. And I don't mean one team is always going to be way better than the other. It's just that the teams are better at doing certain things, whereas the other team are uh, maybe uh, lacking in that area. So you got aliens versus humans. Predominantly ranged combat for the humans, and then more melee, very fast, sort of zerg-like tactics for the aliens. Which is very cool, and two different play styles work. Surprisingly, the balance is there. It's just, uh, I would say it's a lot harder for new people to play as the aliens, but once you get there, it's very, very fun. Uh, the humans, I would say as well, they're, they're also quite fun. Most people actually, when they play the game for long enough, just go with the aliens because it's more interesting. So you play as humans in most games all the time with, you know, normal FPS mechanics. It's still quite cool, and obviously with that sort of aspect of RTS FPS going in there with a the commander role. You know, I imagine it can be quite frustrating for the commander. I used to play a lot of Empires back in the day. For those that don't know, that was a conversion of Half-Life 2. Or a mod for Half-Life 2, which uh, brought in the whole FPS, RTS sort of vibe, I suppose. It wasn't the first thing to do it, I believe. But it was the first thing I played where I really experienced it. I think there was a Command & Conquer game. I think it was a Command & Conquer game, anyway. A while ago that had a mechanic like that. Mm. Let's take a drink of water. I've got a topic now, it's great. Although it's gone now. <laughs> it's disappeared, help! It's, dis it's gone! Find it, quickly! But yeah, with the whole... Uh, sort of getting bored at games, but still feeling quite nostalgic about it. But yeah, Natural Selection 2 though, a great one. I'm looking forward to going nuts about it. I'm not too sure who I preferred to play as though. I liked both teams equally. And there was the same group of people as well. It was a very small community. So you'd always be really playing with the same people, which is quite nice. And there's a lot of banter going on as well. And everyone was friendly about it. Every now and again you get that troll bastard, but you usually got rid of them. So there we go. That's the same with every that's you know, that's the same as every community. You get some new people or you know, when there's a free weekend like how I started playing the game, people will be complaining because there's noobs everywhere. So that's the same like that's the same with Red Orchestra 2 as well, you know. Whenever there's a free weekend Red Orchestra where Red Orchestra 2, I just load that up and have a little bit of fun. Not that I'm a veteran at the game, it's just that I'm not bad. I'm not that bad at it. You just gotta get used to dying with Red Orchestra 2. That's pretty much it. The game is Death Simulator, or slash PTSD Simulator, the game. There we go. 
Um, what's, what am I doing with this bit? Am I cutting this off and just having like a nice... I could probably do something really cool there. Let's keep our eye open for it. Leave it for now. So how many houses have we got around here? Quite a few, I would say. We've got, what, one, six, ten houses hanging around up there. Uh, 14. 6, 17. 17 houses, that's pretty good. We pretty much have way more houses than we all need for all of the people that we have. But, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, aesthetically, I'm looking forward to uh, just having this all covered with buildings and houses and chimneys and making it look like a proper city and... Oh, it'll be beautiful. I'm looking forward to that. You know, I can remember it's starting off... Very small spot. Just getting ready, getting the weird, weird face alien thing that we made that's actually unrecognizable now because it's all towers and castle and that lot. It's going to be great. But yeah, nice. Good things. Rail Crusher 2 is a good game as well. I've been playing a little bit of that lately. I don't play too much because obviously you've got to get used to dying, but sometimes you just die a lot and all the time and you might not really be in the mood for that. Usually if you start doing that, you just jump onto like an AI game or something like that and just enjoy killing the AI. Although sometimes you get owned by AI bullshit where you like, it just like 180s shoots you in the head and you're like, the fuck. The AI in the game, for those wondering, is terrible. It's really bad. To the point where you'll just see them stuck. They'll be going left and right constantly. Sort of shooting at the ground sometimes. They will like ridiculously miss you, but then sort of 50% of the time, not 50% of the time, but like 20% of the time, they will go for like the, okay, you've done enough now, you should insta-die. Like 180, 360, no scope, they gotta do like 180, then the 360 behind that as well, which is just, <laughs> mostly it's 180. 180, maybe a crouch to go with that, shoot you square in the head, didn't even look like they aimed, and then you're dead, and you're like, the fuck. <laughs> also, people running around with the MG, and it's like, why? <laughs> How are you doing this? The MG's not loud enough and not heavy enough. You're aiming it too quickly as well. That's the other thing with the MG in the game. I think the way to balance it is to make sure aiming it, not aiming it, but um, spraying it on the hip should really be more sporadic and give you like significantly more recoil. It's just, it's, that's what it would do. But nope, people running around with that thing just spraying you. Usually use the rifle, because they're just cool. The rifle's like the best weapon in the game, funny enough. <laughs> it really is. All the other ones are situational, as the rifle's pretty much good for everything. Other than, obviously, close quarters. But if you've got a bayonet, then, you know, you've got to do the whole charge for Mother Russia, that kind of thing. I don't really play the Rising Storm expansion too much. I think I just don't really find the setting as interesting. I know the Rising Storm 2 is coming out, the Vietnam. I wonder how that's going to work out, considering it's mostly going to be automatic weapons. Should be fun. Although, I don't think I'll play it. I just, I like the setting for Red Ocrusha 2. You know, it pays more attention to the Eastern Front, which I think is horribly, horribly downplayed in the history books. Or at least when it comes to Western perspectives. You know, we pay more attention to the Western Front. Uh, and the Americans, particularly the um, Pacific. You know, it's still a part of it, obviously. Um, it's not really talked about much in Europe, but obviously in America it is, because that's, you know, what they were doing. Um, but yeah, we, we learn about the Eastern Front, uh, but we just don't get too much representation of it, and I'm just glad to see more games trying to go for that. Uh, what am I trying to do here? Umber break, that's it. I'm talking too much now, I'm forgetting things. We want the outside to actually... We Well, we want these corners here to actually be where the Umber break goes. It looks like we may have wasted some stone right here, unfortunately. I'm just hoping that the wood doesn't awkwardly connect. Actually, that might look quite nice if it does. <laughs> we'll see. We just get the Umber break all the way around here, though. Where do we want the doorways? I quite like the idea of a doorway being here or here. Actually, should be two blocks away. So yeah, one there, one there. Where do we want it? 
I think one there is a good idea. So we can have a road three blocks across going down here, and then across, and then this bit could be a bunch of trees. And, um, do you want the doorway at the back? No, I don't think so. I think the doorway should go around about here, and then we just sort of cut up this bit a little bit. Well, we cut up the flooring around here somewhat. Yeah, if we try doing that, if we cut up the floor, maybe just this area... There we go. And then we can build around it. Uh, maybe a bit down here as well. Actually, maybe not. No, we do. We need to get rid of that. Just so it's not too close. Alright, anyway, back to the Yumba Brick while they're mucking around over there. Alright, get the Yumba Brick along here done. A doorway here should go... Wait, what? <laughs> the way I said that was Yoda. A deer! <laughs> what? A door here should go. <laughs> Just go very Yoda-like right there. Right, anyway, yeah. A doorway should be around about here, because otherwise this walkway is going to be quite empty. We're not going to be using up too much. And we'll have another Umber Brick around here. This should have a doorway... Ooh, this is going to be quite awkward, actually. Too small, that's the problem. A doorway could go here, convincingly. I'm going to push out by one. And now we can actually have a doorway right there. We just cut this bit off. Um, yeah, we cut it off by there as well. What we could do is just have that all be paved stone grey. It'll be interesting. Just this bit, paved stone grey, mixed with the uh, ceramic roofing. Or we just go back completely. Yeah, we could do that instead. I like the idea of doing that. Over here. That's nice. So now, what we can do is muck around with the terrain blocks. Merv's getting a little bit leery. Oh, that's the wrong one. So we'll just get all these corners. We are going to be using grass here, because we're going to get rid of the stone anyway. So let's get the grass. And then let's... Do this, but the pathway's gonna go around about here, so let's cut that bit off. Get rid of that. Get a corner here. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's gonna be quiet right now. I'm just I'm concentrating, okay? It's a lot of work. It's not much work, but still, I'm gonna pretend it is. Um so we've got these corners. Now we just do this at each one of these corners. Uh, not like that. And uh, here. And there. I think that's about right. Let's see if that works out. And then we'll have like this nice little area. And then we can go down here. Get our ceramic roofing. I got there immediately. That's great. Ceramic roofing, and then we can mine across like this, go down by three. And that could be our little pathway. Now, do we want this to be, I think we've had this conversation a million times, pavestone grey or pavestone brown? I think we've already said pavestone brown is just going to be for random alleyways here and there. So it's going to have to be pavestone grey. This bit, I'm not just sure why it's doing that, but let's get rid of it. Uh, this is all pavestone grey. This looks nice. I'm, I'm loving this. Just the way the terrain morphs around the road. Makes it look a lot more quaint, I feel. Uh, this bit as well. We need to mine up to a roundabout here. That's actually pavestone. Okay. So this bit can go out by three. We can get the rest of this umber brick done. The only problem with the umber brick here is obviously that the way it morphs in with the terrain is going to make it look a little bit strange because we can't see all the umber brick. I think that's the only way we can make it work with the morphing of the terrain. That's the, sac that's the sacrifice we make. We should be really using the control, uh, not control, alt right there just to make it a lot easier. So we got this little middle bit right there. It's quite nice looking. Or we can have it on the other side and then a road going at the back is makes more sense. 
just gonna try it on both. Um, let's get rid of this first. Actually, this. This bit is gonna do that. So why can't we just have it on the back there instead? Well, probably because the way it morphs in with the ground right there, I'd rather it go up and not have to mine down one block around here. So if we just do it like that. So this is timber plank. What about this? This is stone. It's really hard to know which is which. All right, there we go. That's nice. And then we can have a nice little wall or door right there. So now we can have a pathway going down here and then just sort of go into that point. Or we can have it fit in there. Now, if we're going to do some... We're probably going to have another house right there, so that's fine. That's stone... Pretty confusing. It's about it's like this around roundabout like that. <laughs> Maybe the houses are a bit awkward to work with at the moment. And then we'll have our doorway probably around about here actually. Yeah, that's nice. I don't want the doorways to be aligned up with this road. I think I'd rather the road go out by a block. This one could actually go on the back here, and then a road could stick out. And probably get these other houses as well. It's a lot easier when there's blocks around it. You know where you're going. Like this bit, I don't think should be doing that. Should be doing this. Not that it's too much of a problem. I mean, obviously now some houses are actually going to be odd rather than even. Which I guess is the real problem. Let's pause the game real quick here, just so we can get some doorways done. It looks like the doorway's going to have to be there now. Yeah, and then we can have like a nice walkway and all bits and bobs around that. So we're filling up that space already, which is good. Right here, we probably want to use up that walkway. So if we cut this off. There we are. Just round about here, and then we can morph the terrain around it. We'll get some bits around it just to make it look a little bit more natural. Here as well, we can have a doorway right around there. That's good. And that's quite easy to fix up as well. We can just cut that bit off. Construction. Umber brick. Hope I'm using umber brick for all of this. Um, right around here for the other doorway. That's good. And this one can have a door right here. Hmm. Let's go out by one extra on this building. Just so we can actually have an even doorway. There we go. It's not always good to have an even doorway. I just want a good use of the umber brick. Uh, umber, I mean, uh, timbered floor corners. Timbered brick corners. Uh-huh. <sighs> All right. This is looking quite good. Now, the game is paused because I paused it. <laughs> good. I'm just, conf just letting you all know it was me that did that. And then here... Another doorway, and here we can have a doorway right here actually. And that gives us a good reason to go around and through here. I might want to cover that up though. And um, we find some stone. Terrain, not sand, stone. Or sandstone if you want. That's quite nice. Nice. Right, so we still got quite a lot left to do when it comes to the terrain here. So we need to cut this off and turn it into paved stone grey. Because I think it, the way it morphs, I think it ends up looking a little bit strange. Like if we've got grass underneath the ceramic roof, I think it morphs oddly. Then again, the stone doesn't. And that also morphs with the terrain nearby. So maybe it won't do that. Um, let's see. When we're looking right here. Flooring. Paved stone grey. Now we can actually get this bit done. Which I'm looking forward to seeing when it's fully done. Like these two buildings, they look quite nice. Might work on these now, actually. Focus on the other ones later. More paved stone, great. This one connects like this. Game is not paused, which is good to see. We do have a bunch of miners just sort of chilling out. We have 5,950 stone, that's insane. We can probably make more brick now, I suppose. Keep the stonemasons happy. 
and actually change some of those miners into stonemasons. The ones that are good at it. So we got Liam right there. You're a good stonemason. Seaboy, good stonemason. Nelria, very good stonemason. A bunch of them, actually.